Welcome to our Let's Play of Loon. This browser game is from Games for Change, a group of applications committed to assembling games for change. Warning, watch at your own risk if you're suffering from clinical depression. Some images and language used may be triggering. Remember, sadness is always temporary. This shall too pass. Depression affects 10% of the population of the US. However, since it's a mental illness, it's more difficult to comprehend for the average person than something like high cholesterol. A source of confusion relates to the state of being depressed versus feeling depressed. The feeling of depression can be brought up by the tumbles of life or by nothing at all. But with time will pass. Clinical depression is a state of being within the mind. Not only does the feeling of depression not pass for at least two weeks, but a person with a clinical depression will have their life negatively impacted many different ways. They may struggle to connect at work with friends or family, even their ability to have fun. Someone with depression may have sudden change in activity level, appetite, and sleep cycle. A person with clinical depression may be restless, needing to be in constant motion, or slow with no drive to move. They may even have frequent thoughts of suicide. Even with all this information, it's difficult to diagnose and treat depression. Beyond social stigma, depression is a mix of environmental and neurological factors and therefore takes an average of 10 years to treat properly. Depression stands tall as an intimidating illness. Looking to scale the peaks of depression and create an experience that not only relieves the stress of depression, but builds empathy for those afflicted is Gambit. Gambit is a partnership between the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and the government of Singapore. The partnership looks to examine the different ways that games can be explored as a medium. From these ideas, a loot is born. Created by Tay N Ng, a student from Nanyang Technological University that worked with Gamebit in the summer of 2010, Alude looks to foster an experience of the ups and downs of clinical depression. The name Alude references the Latin word illudra, or away from, and the Latin word ludo, which means to play. Thus, the name Alude in context of depression focuses on the idea that depression isn't simply sadness, but a mosaic of emotions that focus on disconnection from the world. In order to emphasize this point, the game uses a platformer design to create a world which a player must navigate through. However, in order to successfully navigate the obstacles, such as trees and levels, which are thought of as moodscapes, the player must resonate with the world around them. This resonate mechanic showcases to the player that connections are the ultimate way of seeking happiness, as they are the tool used to overcome the game's obstacles. Loot attempts to restore players with a desire to reconnect, and as such, creates a world to practice these feelings. This creates a behind-the-scenes look of the complexity of depression, allowing players, regardless of their experience with depression, to be better informed of how to navigate through their feelings in their everyday life. Walking through the forest, everything seems calm and no danger is presented. As you continue to walk, you discover an unknown world without knowing too much what to do. You come across different birds that intend for you to resonate. These symbolize the good and the bad moments anyone can come across in their day-to-day -day life. The first bird seems to give you energy or some type of power to keep walking and going along the unknown path. This bird seems to have a good impact, representing a good moment in life, helping the character jump higher and with more power. The bird can also be seen as a good friend or someone that uplifts you. In a study from Harvard measuring happiness, Liz Minio mentions an important aspect about our relationships with others. Those ties protect people from life's discontents, helps to delay mental and physical decline, and are better predictors of a long and happy life than social class, IQ, or even genes. This showcases how important maintaining relationships with others is and how it can be crucial to your overall health. As you walk through the forest, you may question what branch or jump to take. You encounter what seems to be the same type of bird, but when you try to resonate with it, energy is taken away. This is showcasing a bad moment in your day or an uncomfortable encounter with someone you care about or don't care about. Your character seems out of breath and it has troubles to continue doing the jumps to reach the next branches up in the sky. At this moment, the character is feeling worthless and doesn't have the strength like before to jump higher. Depression is different for everyone and it is so difficult to understand. It drains people and causes loss of energy 
This is shown over and over again as the main character in the game is trying to advance higher in the forest. The main character is quickly presented with many ways and different paths to take. Some jumps being safer than others, he continually tries to find his way up into the branches without falling down. This can be a metaphor for taking risky life decisions and feeling the anxiety and danger when taking an unknown step. Overall, this represents a different past life presents to us and that jumps illustrate our actual drive with making decisions. As you successfully got out from climbing from the branches, you feel happy that you're on top of the world. Want to introduce a term called bipolar disorder. It is associated with, this, with episodes of mood swings ranging from depressive lows and manic highs. Wow! Look, I just got out from the branches, as it symbolizes I just got out of the funk. Yeah, look, I'm flying. I'm flying like a bird. Carry me higher. Whenever people have diagnosed with depression, you'll often hit a hyper period for a brief moment. Just like how this boy is doing, jumping on flower petals. Look at that. It's just jumping on a cushion. As you come back to reality, the world seems the same, but something is off. The colors around you are grayer and it seems as if you're dragging your feet around. According to a study from Harvard, it states, stress has its own physiological consequences. It triggers a chain of chemical reactions and responses in the body. This further explains why the character seems to have the change of energy throughout the game. When you come across the first bird, it changes color. Every time you resonate, it takes away energy from you and it becomes extremely difficult to climb on the tree branches. This speaks for when people keep going through tough times in their lives. Once the character is deposited on the familiarity of the quiet forest floor, the player is then confronted with the worst aspects of depression, the crushing normalcy of melancholy feelings. As the player maneuvers the character upwards, trying to hit the treetops, and as such more positive energy or restlessness, Vines extend from the bottom portion of the screen, looking at the heels of the player as they attempt to jump higher. As the player moves, trying to escape the vines becomes more labor-intensive, just as trying to fight depression often leaves a person feeling drained, a fact defined by the World Health Organization. The character then appears in an enclosed, darkened space. The player is faced with game feel, a term described by Dr. Brendan Co. as being often defined as the juice or experience of a game. The audio, visual, physical mechanics of the game set a specific experience up for the player. We can see this as the character begins to pace. The ground moves, stretching and sinking like slime under the character's shoes. As the character is then deposited to another smaller, more enclosed, darker space. This process continues repeating until the character is in a space where they cannot move. This design choice deeply illustrates the struggle that depression is, the inability to move and escape from the trap of the room, indicative of what depression is like, as illustrated by the National Institute for Mental Health, which states that depression specifically translates to a feeling of pressing hopelessness and pessimism. Which brings one to an important idea. Depression is stressful. In the Benefits of Playing Video Games, written in 2014 by Granick, Lobel, and Engel, they state that stressful experiences are often integral in order for a game to feel challenging. What this implies is that the design of a game inherently calls for stressful situations. That for games to feel good to play, they need stress to create adversity. This may be true, one can concede that this stress is important, not only for the player to feel challenged in the game, but to understand depression and therefore build their empathy for those with depression. Granick, Lobel, and Engel also state that video games may implicitly encourage players to manage and relieve their stress during goal pursuit. This means that by playing a lewd, players are navigating their own reactions to stress. This is crucial to the ideas surrounding a lewd, as it means that through the playing of a lewd, players are experiencing what it is like to live with depression, and thus build a certain amount of empathy through play for those that have depression. The end sequence for lewd is a lot to unpack, so let's start at the beginning. 
Fan sequence starts with the player falling down into a dark place that they cannot get out of. The player has experienced these deep dark glows before, but this time it's different. The dark place that the player has fallen into this time is seemingly inescapable, as the player can only move forward. As the player keeps going forward, the music gets more and more intense and a red light appears on the right side of the screen, growing brighter as the player moves towards it. From here, the player can make one of two decisions. Follow the red light or turn around. If the player follows the red light, they walk off the edge of a cliff and the game ends. It is presumed that the player dies as the next graphic that appears on the screen is a graph that shows the player's steady descent towards the bottom. A quote appears on the screen. Every man dies, not every man really lives, by Graham Greene. If the player chooses to turn around, they can slowly start walking back. A white light appears on the left side of the screen and heavenly music starts playing as the player walks towards it. The game ends as soon as the player walks out into the light and it's presumed that the player chose to keep on living. The player is shown a quote that reads, in the depth of winter, I finally learned that there was in me an invincible summer. The ending is the best example of how Allude employs system metaphors and effective metaphors. For this project, I read a thesis on empathized play, which explained how different types of metaphors help form narratives in gameplay. System metaphors are how the game mechanics themselves are metaphorical. An example of this in the ending would be the end game graphs which visually remind the player of how they played the game, how many times they managed to reach the top of the tree, and how many times they were dragged down by the vines. The effective metaphors are the two separate endings to the game. Going off the cliff represents death as a final conclusion, a grim end result. Going back into the light, however, represents recovery as the final solution. The heavenly music and the sudden appearance of the white light potentially representing other people reaching out to the player to provide help and hope. I feel like this ending also shows that recovery is best achieved with the help of other people, therapy, or perhaps a mix of both. In these endings, effective metaphors are used to explain the endings at the end of the game as well as to add context to the quotes featured at the end. As you see this immense journey of someone going through depression and juggling with life's choices, as a player, you understand the conflict and internal struggles people can be going through. Everyone deals with making the right decision, which is shown throughout the course of the game. This can be extremely thought-provoking and can be an excellent game to further enhance the general aspects on this topic. Elude's attempt at a socially conscious game is successful to a fault. While the mechanics and design of the game convey the experience of depression, we are somewhat put off by the quotes that appear in the scenery and between scenes that downplay the feeling of sadness or impress an idea that depression will simply pass. Beyond that, having the character be explicitly a white male is off-putting and not needed. However, despite these drawbacks, Elude is a game we would recommend to anyone looking to understand depression.